Sabbath. Before we start our study, we can bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time in the Sabbath morning as we're going to listen to your word. So we're going to study together. May you be with us and help us to remember all the lessons that we learn in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. Okay, so the last few Sabbaths we have been learning about an important subject. I hope you all remember what we've been learning about. We've been learning about the Ten Commandments. And we have learned that the Ten Commandments are found in Exodus 20, verse 1 to 17. Now, just to recap, we had commandment number one and commandment number two. I will not read them for you. Let's listen as Vishay is going to tell us and show us also the motions for commandment number one and commandment number two. Commandment number one, you shall not have any other gods before me. Commandment number two, you shall not make idols. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. Thank you, Bushi. And today we are now dealing with commandment number three, which is found in Exodus 20 verse 7. And it reads, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Now, some of us have names, or all of us have names. If someone is to call you a different name from the name that you have, especially if they call you a word that is unkind, would you be happy with that? No, none of us would be happy with that. No one wants to be teased or to be called names that are not kind. Now, God then says, you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For today's lesson, I'm going to talk about the greatest name of all, the most important name of all, that is in the name of God. Sometimes when people are angry, they go on to misuse this name. And we're going to mainly focus on the first part of the verse that says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. So in anger, sometimes we say the name of God in a kind way. We say the name of God in our frustrations, which is not good really, because we are not supposed to misuse the name of the Lord our God. Now, do we know of any bad words that we use when we're angry? Do we think that God is happy when we use bad words when we're angry? God is not happy. He does not want us to be unkind or to say hurtful things when we are upset or at any time in our lives. Saying things like that shows us and those who are around us that we don't really respect God. Now, the question is, how can we use God's name? Are there any ways that we can use God's name in a good way? Yes, there are. Psalms 30 verse 4, 4 says, Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones praise his name this is a very special way to use the name of the lord sing to him and praise his holy name isn't that good instead of misusing the name of the lord and saying it when we're angry or when we're upset we can sing about the name of the lord but why do we sing about the name of the lord what is so special about the name of the lord we trust in jesus right yes we do Jesus has done so many things for us. He lived a life of perfect peace. He died for us on the cross and he rose again on the third day. And we put all our trust in him because he has told us that we can use his name and call on his name. Let's see Romans. Romans 10 verse 18 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, Exodus does not tell us uh, to not call on the name of the Lord. It says we must not misuse the name of the Lord. But if we do call on the name of the Lord for the right things, call on the name of the Lord and we will be saved. So Jesus uh, expects some things from us. 
that even as we are little as we are, we are supposed to call on the name of the Lord and He is there to save us. He expects us to love and to forgive others around us. He also in turn loved us and forgave us and He wants to help us obey. Now, have you ever heard a phrase that says, action speaks louder than words? When people see a Christian, when they hear that you go to church, what do you think they expect? They expect certain things from you. They expect you to be kind, to be generous, to be helpful. And when we are not all these things, what does it tell us about the God that we worship? <clears throat> when we love God, we should show it to those who are around us. We should show it in our actions, not just say it. So our actions also speak to the name of the Lord because if you say you believe in God and you call on the name of God and yet you do not act appropriately according to the name that you say you belong to, what are you doing? You are giving the name of the Lord a bad name. You are bad naming God and you are giving God a bad reputation because people think that because you belong to this God, then you're acting this way now. That means, therefore, that your God is not a good God, which is not true. If we uh, still disobey and are unkind, it does not help those who are around us realize how amazing God is. When we say we love God, but act like we do not, that is misusing the name of the Lord our God. And we should not do all these things, as we see in the picture, fighting, bullying others, these are bad things that give the name of God a bad reputation and people will not believe that God is great because when we do these things, we're not showing his love. In Colossians, we also are taught that whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. So in whatever you do, whether it's at home or at school, everything that you do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now in the slide that we saw before, we see people who are being kind to others. This is what we mean when we say, your actions speak louder than words, help others around you so that they can know that there is a God who is greater. There is a God who wants us to act appropriately and who is willing to help us obey him. So whatever you say, whatever you do, shows everyone you meet that God is good. As we go throughout this week, let us remember our verse. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. This is not just in your speech, but also in your actions. Remember to keep God's name holy by what you do and by what you say. We're now going to get to our motions for this week that show us how to remember the third commandment. Let's take a listen. Commandment number three. My fingers make the letter W, which is our words. Three fingers also stand for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Commandment number three says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Thank you again, Bushe. Now we're going to listen to our mission story and then we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll take a listen to our song thereafter. Hi everyone. I hope you are keeping safe in our world. Our mission story for today is entitled Poison Home. It's about a girl named Emma who asked her parents for a pet when she was two years old. She asked her parents for a horse. And the parents said, No, Emma, you can't get a horse because they used to live in a city apartment and there's no space for a horse. Next, she asked for a dog. The parents also said, no, you can't get a dog because you do not have space for a dog. The father further explained to him that when God created animals, he never meant for them to stay in confined or small spaces. Animals are meant to stay in open spaces and not in enclosed spaces. Emma understood that. 
Then the parents told you that when they buy a bigger stress, they will be able to get Emma a pet. And then she said, okay, you want to get a pet. When Emma was seven years old, they bought a big house that had so much stress and yard outside. So Emma got a pet and she was a pet and she named him Tom. One day when mom was in the bathroom, she discovered some cockroaches and then she told her husband. Then they did got some poison for the cockroaches. It was kept into small bowls and they put them in the bathroom. He told everyone that the bathroom was off limits for Tom. But you know, when something is off limits, someone wants to be check what is really going on. So Tom wants to, wanted to get in the bathroom to check what was going on. Why wasn't he allowed to get in the bathroom? But they all kept the door closed. One day when mama was preparing for them to go and visit grandma and grandpa, she left the door open by mistake. Guess what happened? Tom rushed in the bathroom. He saw the balls and he ate the balls. Just when he was finishing the last ball, dad found him in the bathroom. He opened the mouth and saw that it was too late, he had already started to poison. Then they he told everyone what had happened. And then they started panicking. Emma started crying. They couldn't take Tom to a bed because there was no one available. They couldn't take Tom along with them to grandpa and grandma because they had to pick other people along the way. So there was nothing they could do. But pray. Father said, okay, let's pray that maybe God will perform a miracle and keep Tom alive. So they prayed for Tom. They got water, food, left Tom in a room. Along the way, they all prayed that God would perform a miracle and keep Tom alive. They got grandma and grandpa's place safe. They also shared with them what had happened. And grandma said, you know what? When kids swallow poison, they always vomit it out at some point. So that gave Emma a little bit of hope. They left grandma and grandpa's place and then they came back, they came back to their house. Arrived, they opened the door Everyone wanted to see if Tom was still alive. And guess what? Tom was alive. They opened the door. They were also happy to see him alive. And then they prayed to God. Emma was surprised to say, I didn't know that God answered prayer even for little children like me. And they thanked God for keeping Tom alive. So, what do we learn from this story, us boys and girls? We learn that when we pray to God, He will also answer our prayers. No matter how small we are, God answers prayers for everyone. Keep well and thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Anita Monashe, for that wonderful mission story. Now we're going to close in prayer, and then thereafter we'll have our song that reminds us the Ten Commandments. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the time that you've given to us to share your word. Be with us now as we are now going to be in our different places and continue even Father, to protect us, continue to grant us your mercies and continue to keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next Sabbath, boys and girls, and keep well and God bless. <laughs>
Commandment 9 Do not like it's not fine Commandment 10 Do not covet your friends That's the Ten Commandments that's right That God gave to the Israelite I am the Lord your God Who brought you out of Egypt Yeah.